today we are going to make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not going to be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Today, we are gonna talk about painting the blazer. So, y'all saw the pictures uh, of how ugly uh, this, thing, this thing was when I bought it. Uh, the paint just peeling off and uh, some areas where some folks had tried to primer it before and you know maybe a few rust spots here and there. Um, I had to give it a long, hard thought process as to what I really wanted to do, because it'd be nice to have a, a beautiful, beautiful blazer, um, but I'm gonna be doing a lot of off-road stuff with this, and I've had some experience in the past. I had a very nice uh, 95 Firebird that I took camping one time, um, and it was on a fairly decent road, but it was still a dirt road, and in the campsite, I wound up uh, rubbing up against some scrub oak scrub oak and just scratch the heck out of the side of the firebird so yeah not good i have done some really nice paint jobs on some cars in the past only to have within a month uh let's say there was the eight thousand dollar paint job we did on the 98 cobra and winter time a month after i got it out i'm backing up and i hit a snowbank in uh, one of the parking lots not very hard but just enough to completely screw up the paint on the rear bumper so there goes the eight thousand dollar paint job so i wasn't sure what i really wanted to do here i just knew that i wanted something quick and easy because i can come back and i can work on a panel at a time and get them all perfect at some point in time but if i was going to work on this thing with with my time schedule um, you know, it, it'd be a year before I got it painted and that just, no, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't live with it as ugly as it was parked in front of my house. <laughs> so today I'm going to go through with you the thought process on the different, uh, paint jobs that I had thought about and what ultimately I decided that I was going to do and how we're going to do it. So without further ado today on Mad Dog Merv's channel. We are going to talk about what in the blue blazers is going on here. All right, guys. So you've heard me talk about it. The 1986 Chevy Blazer that I paid $1,500 for, and here's how it looks. Whoa. Um, not a lot of dents, though. A little bit of rust, but not terrible. But, man, the paint, you go down the road, the paint's just peeling off. I mean, this thing, holy crap. Those uh, paint jobs from the 80s just really sucked. Way to go, General Motors. So, it's so ugly, I don't want to park it in front of my house, honestly. Um, so, I've got a couple of ideas. One, how about I paint it all flat black? I think that would look really cool. Here's a picture of one that's out there that, yeah, this would be cool. Most of the time, it's going to see terrain just like this. So I really don't want a, you know, beautiful, shiny paint job because, well, you know, it's just going to get scratched up. But, yeah, this would look pretty good. Nice primer black. And then maybe I'll do like a friend of mine did with, they called this the Punisher truck. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll do like a Mad Dog Merv logo or something on it. Yeah, that, that might be kind of fun. So that was one thought process. Some nice flat black lacquer primer should cost me, you know, minimal amounts of money or I could do a camo like this I really like this kind of a woodland camo I recently got a model of a GMC pickup that had a similar camo thought well this wouldn't be too bad but in Utah no this would be yeah for the desert area it wouldn't work I did see this one online and I'm like whoa that's real similar to the original color and that's beautiful but man my body needs so much work and it just get all scratched up so let's go see what paint we can find I'm going to go to my favorite auto body supply store superior automotive supply it's where I've gotten paint for years and years and years back when I used to do a lot of automotive painting um, sticker shock I haven't really painted anything in about 15 20 years and they looked at me like it was funny when I said black 
primer, <laughs> a lacquer primer, uh, yeah, they didn't have it. And the other primers they had were very expensive. So nah, back to the drawing board. I did find this one, this Rust-Oleum Industrial Enamel, because I have used Industrial Enamel before. And it shows that Lowe's has it. Oh, yeah, this, this would be pretty good. You know, the blue didn't, didn't look too bad. So let's go to Lowe's. And they didn't have it in stock. Lowe's usually has all the paint and everything I need, but this time they didn't have it. Didn't know when they were going to be restocked on it. Uh, this wasn't something I could special order online. I'm like, ah, great. Well, now what? There is a place called the Restore. And it's kind of a secondhand store for building materials and whatnot. And they had an almost full gallon of this uh, Benjamin Moore urethane alkyd gloss enamel in safety blue. You know, what you paint like handicap stalls with. And it's an industrial enamel. So I need to see what I could cut it with so I could spray it. And I found this uh, cleanup solvent by Hilliard that actually does a really good job of thinning this particular paint without retarding it. Some of the things you might use uh, would retard it and I don't want it to be sticky for longer. I want it to flash off quicker. So I thought I would try it out in my airbrush and paint a Jimmy project that I've been kind of refurbishing. So I fired it up in my airbrush and wow, it didn't look too bad at all. So now to dig out my spray equipment. I've got this newer uh, spray gun that um, I've tried on a couple of other projects, not a car yet, but it's worked pretty good for me and maybe I could use that. My regular spray equipment is buried kind of a little bit deeper in and I could dig that out, but I don't know, this, this might not be too bad. The only problem is where to spray it. I don't have a garage and I don't have an access to a garage anymore. So where could I, well, the driveway where I did the 72 Charger, where I did uh, one of my 67 Cougars, my 67 Mustang. I painted those all right here where this Fiat is, but as you can see, I've got a motorhome, a boat, and a Fiat right in the way. Ah, well, that's not going to work because uh, i got to have something where the compressor can reach. So how about the backyard where I painted my 72 Ford truck, I painted another 68 uh, must, uh, Cougar that I had, um, but you can see now there's a playset sitting right there. And there's still the motorhome block and things. I can't do that. Where? What am I going to do? How am I going to spray this thing? I don't have a place to spray it. But then I got thinking, you know, on that charger, one of the things that I did is I rolled the top with, uh, with, a, with a paint roller. And you can see how that top turned out. That top looked pretty darn good. And you know what? As ugly as this truck is, and I'm not doing any sanding or any prep work right now on it. I'll come back and do that later. I don't think I can screw it up, so guess what? I'm going to use a good paint roller, not the cheap, fuzzy, you know, three for five dollar paint roller. No, I'm going to use a decent paint, paint roller, one that I could use with an enamel paint. And put some paint in the paint pan, and I'm going to go around, and I'm going to roll this thing. I know, seems insane, huh? No sanding, no prep work, no nothing. Um, here we go. Here's how it turned out. Now, yeah, I am going to get some peeling, and the rust is going to come back. And guess what? It's going to have scratches from being out in the sticks, and the paint will fade um, over you know, a year or so. But didn't turn out too bad, except here on the tailgate, um, right after I finished painting this, we had a huge storm unexpectedly blow in, and, well, I got a lot of dust and dirt in it. <clears throat> made me really mad. Now you can see the blue doesn't look too bad, but the mirrors and the top, uh, they, uh, they, they look horrible. So back to the restore, and here we have some of uh, the urethane alkyd uh, industrial enamel, urethane enamel, and I'm going to use this in this beautiful white. And paint the mirrors, hmm, yeah, not too bad. Um, considering how they did look, and we are going to paint the top. And wow, what a difference. Um, part of the top, I used a brush, and part of the top, I used a roller. It just depended how how bad certain areas were, and I'll tell you what, that fiberglass top, it soaked that paint right in, but doesn't look too bad. So, here's some pictures. Let's walk around and kind of take a look at it. You know, from 10 feet, it looks pretty good, and 
that that works for me um, what I'll do is I'll go around eventually and I'll sand and work on some of these body panels but now I can do it piece by piece and eventually get a really nice paint job and you want to see well here across the hood yeah you can kind of see it's a little bit rough but hey it's a whole lot better than it was well I hope you like this uh, tutorial I did on this paint job thanks for watching folks I really appreciate it I hope you have a wonderful Memorial Day